What's going on guys? Justin with americantrucks.com and yes, we are finally back here for stage two of my 2021 F-150 build. Now I know it's been a little bit of a hiatus, but when we left you in the first stage, we added that Whipple supercharger where the truck's making about 600 to the tire, clicking off 12 O's at 116 mile an hour. Not bad for a full size truck, but it just looks like a sleeper still. And frankly, I cannot roll like that any longer. I'm dying to do more mods to this truck. So we're gonna totally transform this thing here in stage two with a boatload of parts that you guys currently can't see off camera. But believe me when I tell you, we got a lot to do here in this stage. We're gonna change the ride height, change out those wheels and tires and some other appearance goodies as well. Guys, if you like this content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But in the meantime, got a lot of work to do. So let's get this thing on the lift. Well guys, as you can see, the uh, front suspension is completely blown apart. Joe's got a saw in his hand and is about to do some uh, weight reduction, I guess you can say here. So, sir, don't mess up. All right guys, so we're starting out stage two here with a biggie, and I mean that literally. Now, a lot of guys with these blown or supercharged F-150s tend to go low for more of a street truck vibe. Well, I'm kind of a traditionalist. I wanted to go up, so that's exactly what we're starting out with here. I went with the Super Lift six inch lift kit for the 21 F-150. So we got the six inch kit here. As you can see, we have the nice iron drop knuckle here, all of the cross members, quarter inch plate steel, CNC cut, just a really nice fitting kit. Now this particular kit from Superlift does necessitate a 20 inch wheel or larger, which we got, and you'll see those here in a little bit, but they also give you some numbers for offset to fit a 35 1250 tire. So in order to fit a 35 1250 on a 20 by 10 inch wheel, which I have, you need to run somewhere between a negative 18 millimeter and negative 24 millimeter offset, which I think we nailed, and again, you guys will see that here in a little bit. And I like the super lift stuff because you can kind of customize it as you want to go. For instance, if you want to save a lot of money, you just go with their bare bones kit. They give you spacers for your factory dampers and coilover basically up front, and they give you their super lift shocks in the rear, which are kind of a little bit more basic. As you can see, we do not have the stock stuff on the truck right now. Instead, we went with our friends from Falcon with their four to six inch lift dampers for their tow haul system. Guys, this is huge because for this truck, I really intend on using it for a number of purposes, including towing. Now, not only do I plan on towing my Mustang to and from a racetrack, but I also tow a camper from time to time, which certainly puts a lot of stress on the truck itself. And when you start going with aftermarket suspension kits with really soft rear shocks or struts, it really kind of digs into those towing numbers overall and your overall towing performance. So that's what I got right here. This is the rear shock from Falcon for their tow haul system. And the magic really is up here, guys. This is currently set up for your comfort or sport mode, but then you flick it on over here to two, that's a moderate tow load. And then all the way to three, if you're towing something real heavy, like that 28 foot camper that we tow from time to time. Uh, but that's not all. As you can see, we got brand new brakes on here. Our friends from Power Stop talking about towing, talking about hauling. This is their Z36 tow haul setup for the 21 and newer F-150. So the star of the kit, no doubt, is the drilled and slotted rotors. As you can see, they're gonna help dissipate heat a little bit better and look pretty cool behind those wheels, which we'll show you here in a little bit. But the important part of the Z36 kit is right here. This is their Z36 tow heavy duty pad. It's a carbon fiber infused ceramic pad that is gonna hold up to a lot more heat than your traditional ceramic pad. It's gonna offer a little bit more bite and not only will it help with towing and hauling, but when we throw those 35, 12, 50, on here, those things are not light. They're about 100 plus pounds each. That's gonna help bring this thing to a stop with the added weight on all four corners. So again, as you can see, we're not just building a fast truck that's gonna look cool. We're building something that is still functional. And that was very important to me here because again, I do use this thing as a truck. So we wanna make sure we don't lose anything in that regard. Uh, a lot of talking here, guys. We're not done yet. We have to get these guys in place, of course, and some other stuff as well. So let's finish this up. So 
So we left you last, guys. We were talking about the lift kit, the brakes, all that good stuff. Well, as you can see now, the truck is on the ground. We got the new wheels and tires on. This is a big moment, so let's break everything down. Now, you might remember when I was talking about that lift kit that Superlift gave us some very specific wheel fitment in order to have the best possible experience after the install rocking a 35-1250 tire, which we have. So let's talk wheels. This is the Weld Ledge Wheeled. It's a 20 by 10 inch wheel, negative 18 millimeter offset. So we followed exactly the specs that Superlift gave us and it resulted in the best fitment possible. No rubbing front to back on either of the crash bars there. A little bit of rubbing here on our uh, air dam, if you will. That's a minor trim away though. And then we'll be 100% free and clear. Let's talk these wheels a little bit more. I'm a big Mustang guy, weld wheels. It's kind of synonymous with the drag racing scene. They make some of the nicest wheels available for Mustangs, uh, muscle cars, whatever. So seeing them in the truck world here was a no brainer for me. Really, really dig the fitment here. Here again, 20 by 10, negative 18 millimeter offset. So we got a very aggressive stance looking down the side of the truck. So we got about, I would say about two inches of poke here, which we will take care of in our next step. You'll have to wait and see there. Uh, but aside from that, this is the satin gun metal black lip here. I like it's got a little bit of a lip going on. Negative 18 millimeters again. They do offer these wheels in a few different offsets. So if you didn't want to go for more of a poke look, you wanted like more of a flush look without any flares. They do offer, I believe, a zero and also a plus 20 millimeter offset as well. And you can even go the other way and go negative 44. They offer that to go real crazy with the fitment. So big shout out to Weld here. Absolutely love these wheels. Um, I'm a big fan of the satin gunmetal with the black. Uh, but let's talk tires here as well because we went with the Nitto Ridge Grappler again, 35, 12, 50, R20. Uh, you have to run a 20 inch wheel in order to fit this lift kit. So that's why we went with the weld, by the way. And again, the 35, 12, 50, R20 Nitto Ridge Grappler. I had trail grapplers on the Raptor. I thought they were an awesome tire. They lasted forever, relatively quiet up until the end. They did get a little bit noisy when they were starting to kind of show their age a little bit. But but the Ridge Grappler here is going to fix any noise concerns I might have had for this particular truck. Going with more of a street build here, um, obviously it's not a Raptor, it's not gonna be jumping and mudding off-road, it's gonna be more street driven, of course. So I wanted something that's gonna be a little bit more quiet, and that's where the Ridge Grappler really shines. It's Nitto's hybrid terrain tire, so you're getting some mud terrain characteristics, thanks to these big shoulder lugs, wide voids between those lugs, and in the middle here, you're getting some tighter blocks, which is gonna be more of an all-terrain tire. So again, they're calling that that hybrid, best of both worlds. It's gonna deliver the traction when you need it most, but more importantly, it's gonna be a nice quiet ride on the road. Personally, I just love the very aggressive sidewall of the, the Ridge Grappler here. You know, a lot of these all-terrain tires, they look kind of soft on the side. I want something aggressive looking for the truck and the Ridge Grappler really is awesome. They also came out with a Recon Grappler as well. I've heard really good things about that, but I've been wanting to try the Ridge Grappler forever. And so here it is on my truck. Also want to point out guys, we did throw on some Rough Country traction bars here in this particular stage. A truck this lifted is gonna have some axle wrap. Basically anytime you goose it, we got the whipple under the hood that pinion angle starts to shift on you quite a bit with a leaf sprung truck like this. So by really locking down that rear axle, uh, we secure it to the frame with the Rough Country traction bars. It's gonna really hold that rear end in place, get rid of that axle wrap, and hopefully lay down the power nice and effectively here with the truck. But guys, again, wheels and tires, I think is one of the biggest moments of any build. It really does make or break the truck in my opinion. And personally, I could not be happier with how the weld wheels look here on the truck. Do have a little bit of poke, not crazy about that. I had that on an old truck, it trashes the paint down the side. So spoiler alert, up next we have something that I think will cover that while still looking nice and beefy. So let's get to it. Well, when we left you in the last scene, guys, we had a whole lot of poke with this negative 18 millimeter offset and the 20 by 10 inch weld wheels. Well, that has officially been addressed thanks to Bushwhacker and their Extend a Flare set for the 21 and newer F-150. If you have a whole lot of poke, sometimes you get a trashed side of the truck. We're talking rock chips, dirty truck, you name it. And frankly, I just don't like to roll like that. I'm very OCD. I like a clean truck. So the Bushwhacker fitment is very nice. They give you the weather stripping, as you can see here. We 
we did have these paint matched to the Oxford White. I just think that's a cleaner look overall, kind of that factory inspired look. You can also grab them in just a traditional matte black as well if you did want to go with that contrast. But again, with the painted Oxford White, I think they flow very nicely. And we just dialed that fitment in perfectly. The negative 18, 20 by 10 inch wheel here with the flare, it is flush with maybe just a millimeter or two of poke uh, with the wheels and tires. So again, nailed the stance with the flares. I absolutely love it. Uh, that's not all we did here, guys. We actually installed some Rough Country fender liners as well. Looking back in there. Now the problem with a white truck is a lot of that stuff really sticks out like a sore thumb, especially when you start lifting the truck like we did here, six inches. The inner fender well is just a big eyesore, especially once it gets muddy, dirt, rubber, whatever up in there. So by adding the Rough Country uh, fender liners, it definitely cleans up the look, I think. But at my favorite part still allows those beautiful Falcons to shine and really show off. So kind of a subtle combo here, but something that I'm really digging and it definitely adds to the overall haunches or uh, muscle to the truck. Gives it a bit wider of an appearance. So really digging the direction this thing is going in now. But up next guys, we've got a couple really key parts here for functionality and for styling. So let's get to those next. All right, fellas, hear me out. Now, you're watching the video, you love the lift kit, but you're thinking to yourself, man, there's no way the wife would ever let me do that because she might be, well, a little on the short side. And hey, that goes for all you ladies watching the video as well. Maybe you're married to a short king. I'm not judging, God bless you. Regardless, if that is your situation, hear me out because this next product might help out your case just a little bit more. These are the Rough Country E-Boards. And if you've heard of a power step before, well, chances are it's probably been from a company like Amp or maybe even RBP. Well, the Rough Country options are kind of the new kid on the block and they're very, very attractive from a few different perspectives. On top of that, they're packing six inches of step here with a 660 pound capacity per side. That's one of the category leaders in overall weight holding capability. Abilities. Aaron, hit them with the door real quick. They make for a very clean look once they're up and out of the way. This is one of my favorite things about these steps is that they just deliver a super clean look, hiding the pinch weld, really showing off those rough country traction bars at the same time. But Aaron, if you crank that door one more time, you can see they pop right down. We got some nice LED lighting for you as well, so you can find the step at night. And it certainly does drop it lower. That's the big point I wanna make here, guys, is that if you do have a vertically challenged spouse at home and you're not too sure about getting a big lift kit, well, this drops it about, I would say, eight to nine inches below the actual door itself, making it much easier to climb into and out of your newly lifted F-150. So again, if you're having a tough time selling that big lift kit at home, Check out these Rough Country power boards. You will not be disappointed. Right, guys, coming down the home stretch here with my 21 F-150 build, and we got a trio of parts here that, in my opinion, might just be the favorite of the build so far. And I know that's saying a lot considering what we've already done, but these parts really just transform the entire attitude of the truck. So let's break them down. Up first, guys, the Cervini's three-inch cow hood for the 21 newer F-150s. I'm kind of a cow hood dork. I love them. I had them on my Mustangs back in the day, and I just really wanted that same look here for the F-150, especially with that supercharged V8 under the hood. It just feels very fitting. Now, this does have functional heat extractors built in, so it does allow that three liter Whipple to breathe a little bit easier, stay nice and cool under there, but on top of that, fits great. Uh, the color match is right on, and best of all, made here in the USA. So I really think that adds a muscular look, especially paired up with those bushwhacker flares. But cruise and down a little bit more, we have a couple of parts from our friends at Diode Dynamics. These headlights are just it, man. I mean, for the 21 and newer F-150s, these will fit your halogen, your LED reflector, which I had, 
and an LED projector package. Now, I don't know how many people might change out those LED projectors, but if you have an LED reflector like I did, not really the coolest looking factory headlights, and there aren't a ton of options out there if you wanted to change those up. Enter the Diode Dynamics and the Elite Max headlights. These things are completely badass, guys. Buy LED projectors, so you're getting both of these shining for both your low and high beams. Really cool blade style DRL projectors here, or DRL daytime running lights. That's gonna give you the option of going either amber or bright white. You got a few different options with how you want those to look as well. Sequential turn signals, but maybe one of my favorite parts about these headlights is that, to my knowledge, you're one of the only headlights that actually includes off-road lighting. So these are switched, just for legal purposes, of course, but once you fire up that switch, these three LEDs down here on the bottom, these cubes, really come to life along with the high and low beams and just produce a ton of light. So if you're looking to add some auxiliary lighting to the front end of your 21 and your F-150, but you don't wanna drill a bunch of holes, add big light bars, uh, this is a really nice low-key option to get some lighting firepower on the front of the truck. Uh, we only have a couple of parts left to add some functionality. We've been doing a lot of appearance, a lot of performance stuff here with this truck. Let's add some functionality to this thing because after all, it is a family hauler, so let's finish strong there. All right, guys, final few parts here for the 21 F-150 build. Maybe not the most exciting, but certainly very functional, so let's break them down. Starting up front, still had that really heinous factory antenna on the truck. I always like to call them a ski pole because, frankly, that's just what they look like. Definitely does not help the appearance at all, so we added the Red Rock six and a half inch off-road antenna. Certainly cleans up the look a lot. On top of that, it adds a little bit of flexibility, so if we do take it through you know, a car wash or go off-road, get it caught on a limb, hopefully it'll give it a little bit more bend instead of just breaking. So really like that from an appearance standpoint. Let's get into functionality a bit. We also added the WeatherTech under seat storage here in black, and the nice part is once those seats are actually folded down, you can't even tell that thing's there. So whether it's my ratchet straps, cleaning supplies, or my daughter's coloring books or Play-Doh, it's all set, good to go. And I really like that because otherwise it's just rolling around the back floor back there and we can't have that. Finally, we have a tonneau cover, right? I mean, how many times have I sang the praises of a tonneau cover, especially a hard folding one like this? Now, this is the Proven Ground quad folding cover, but what I really like most about these covers, guys, is that it really offers a lot of protection, a lot of security, more so than your traditional soft vinyl covers. What's more is we got the power tailgate here on the F-150. Simply let that go. You got these nice rubber grips or straps. You're yanking them up folding it up and out of the way. And one of the things I like best about this cover, guys, is that it does fold all the way up against that back window. So if I take this thing to the mulch yard, have them dump a big load of mulch in the back, I don't have to physically remove the cover itself in order to do that. Simply fold it up, use the little prop rods, and I'm good to go. So close that up. And then the power tailgate here, certainly no problem. That's another big feature I like a lot about this. So uh, definitely had to add some functionality to the build here, guys, um, especially when this is the family hauler. Keep the gear safe, keep all the luggage dry, of course, on those long road trips, and a must have for any truck build. Well guys, that is officially a wrap here for stage two and for the overall build of the 2021 F-150. I think this thing is finally looking the part. It has the looks to match that five liter supercharged bite and honestly, I could not be happier. I mean, this thing's got it all, right? It's got a lot of power under the hood thanks to that Whipple Supercharged Coyote. We definitely have the looks going for us here thanks to that super lift six inch kit, weld wheel and tire package, but it's still functional at the same time Thanks to the Falcon shocks, what will still allow me to tow and haul this thing, use it as its intended purpose, and uh, still be a truck. On top of that, guys, the lighting is on point, the appearance, I mean, you name it, this thing is totally transformed. But we wanna hear from you guys. What is your favorite part of stage two? Be sure to drop us a comment below and let us know. In the meantime, I'm Justin, thanks for watching, and remember, for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.